So I want to talk about An Emotion of Great Delight by Tahir Mafi. I want to kind of give a short review of it as well as discuss some of the discourse that I've been seeing surrounding this book. So if you didn't know, An Emotion of Great Delight is Tahir Mafi's second YA novel, which is also set in the immediate post 9-11 era, this time in 2003, and it's also following the US invasion of Iraq. So the book was kind of marketed in a way where it's, it's trying to make you feel like it's a story about Islamophobia and hate crimes and all that kind of stuff, particularly in the aftermath of these two events that really affected the American perception of the Muslim community at the time. But when you actually get to reading it, you realize that it's about so much more than that, and that aspect of the story actually is more of the backdrop. Uh, whereas the story is really centered on this character's relationship with her family and her best friend, she is going through a lot, more than any 17-year-old girl should. You know, not only is she a Muslim girl sort of living in the time of post 9-11 and post, you know, invasion of Iraq, but her brother recently passed away. Her father is dying. Her mother is extremely depressed because of this, and her older sister has a rocky relationship with her, and they don't quite see eye to eye. So she's in the middle of experiencing immeasurable stress and anxiety and sadness and grief that no girl at this age should have to bear. The book not only does a really good job at talking about how the main character experiences the grief of losing her brother, but it addresses the ways in which that death impacted the entire family and how the entire family's reaction and how they are living in the aftermath of her brother's death is also affecting her and impacting her. Her father is dying of heart disease, likely incurred because of the stress that came from his son's death, and she also really resents her father for reasons that you'll understand when you read the book. Her mother is extremely depressed because her son just died, her husband is dying, and it's taking a huge toll on her. And I like the way that her mother was complexly represented in the story. She was not a perfect mother or a perfect parent, and understandably so because of the immeasurable stress and sorrow and trauma that she had to endure within the time span of this book. But it also had a very negative effect on Shadi and her older sister Shayla because they had to deal with the fact that their mother was emotionally absent and their father was dying. And speaking of her older sister Shayla, even though Shadi and Shayla have a rocky relationship, you could understand why Shayla has so much resentment towards Shadi because Shayla as the oldest sister is the one who kind of has to carry the family burden. Her brother died, her father is dying, her mother is a mess and her sister is no help. <laughs> so everything kind of has to fall on her shoulders. She has to end up taking care of the entire family and if you watched in Canto you would know that older sisters and families often have to deal with a lot of pressure and a lot of expectations and burdens that they really shouldn't have to deal with it always falls on the girl child especially the oldest one so I think the book does a really good job at exploring all of that I like the writing as well I thought that Tahra Mafi's writing although it's not amazing or superb or spectacular it's simplistic and it's elegant enough it, it fits well with her storytelling I thought I think in general this is a really cool book. It's very compelling. There's a lot of mystery, I guess you could say to it, because you don't know how her brother died, you don't know why she's so resentful towards her father. You kind of want to know where things go with her shitty best friend who is super toxic and really annoying <laughs> unnecessarily. You kind of want to know where things will go with her family and her mother. It's a very compelling story and that's why I only read this in like a day, because as soon as I picked it up I was just zooming through. It's so good. There were some things I didn't care for, as I said, some things were a little bit on the nose. I didn't quite understand some of the character's motivations at the time, and I didn't really feel the need, like, I didn't see why this book needed to be set in 2003 and why it needed to be, like, post 9-11. It didn't really give, like, early 2000s vibes other than it was set in the early 2000s. A lot of the things that she experienced, Muslims still experience till this day, perhaps because Mafi was a teenager at this time, maybe she feels more natural writing a young adult realistic story in that time period because her last book if you've read a very large expansive sea is also set in that time period so maybe she just has a preference for that time period because that's when she grew up and she could more speak for what being a teenager back then was like compared to now i don't know but it just it didn't really feel like it needed to be set in that time period especially because when you actually read the book it's not really a story about islamophobia it's not really a story about uh you know 
the consequences of being a Muslim in the post 9-11 era. It addresses those things, not saying that that's not an important part of the story, but that could have been done away with and the story would have still been the same story at its core. But now that we're talking about Muslims and representation, I kind of wanted to talk about some of the discourse that I've seen surrounding this book. So I went on Goodreads and I saw that a lot of Muslim reviewers had some things to say. And I will say that I think that everything they said was valid and I don't think that anybody was technically like incorrect. I just sort of disagreed with their opinions. So just, you know, be very mindful that what I'm going to say right now is my opinions. A lot of people read this book and didn't like the fact that it didn't have any Islamic representation. And this is something that I kind of ranted about on Twitter, you know, that the publishing industry is not really putting out a lot of YA Muslim novels that have like representations of the actual like relationship between the main character and their faith you know it's usually about some sort of political issue right or, or it's usually a story about a character who so happens to be a muslim but the book has nothing to do with islam which is fine but if it has something to do with islam it's usually reducing islam to like a socio-political cultural experience and identity rather than a faith rather than a system of beliefs that the main character abides by so books like love for me to see and all american muslim girl are rarities in the sense that they are two of the only way muslim novels i could think of that actually explore you know what it means to be a muslim right and how islam informs and impacts the main characters and how they navigate their daily lives whereas the rest of these books they sort of just decide to focus on political issues they're quite secular and i mean when i say secular what i mean is the characters are quite secular they're quite non-religious or at the very least their religiosity is not explored on the page. It's usually about some sort of political issue, sometimes within the Muslim community, like sexism or homophobia or, you know, like strict parents or something. Or it could be an issue that uh, affects the Muslim community from the outside, like specifically in the Global North context, right? Like Islamophobia, xenophobia, racism, that kind of stuff. That's what these books tend to focus on, right? And the stereotypes because of things like terrorism and whatnot. But they don't really focus on the main character's relationship with Islam. And this is one of those books. The main character in this book she's a muslim i presume she practices but we don't ever see any scenes where she prays or where she kind of refers to the religion and the faith maybe one or two times she talks about the quran and, and the faith and whatnot but she never really goes into detail with it and how it impacts and shapes her identity as a muslim her own personal religious identity and she's also you know she does things that you know some muslims might see as a bit unbecoming of a young muslim woman she smokes she kisses boys some reviewers had an issue with that and here's the thing about representation representation is cool it's, it's it's cute you know it's necessary we need to see ourselves in the stories that we consume but my main issue with representation politics is the expectation that people have of certain stories there right you know we have we expect that books that seem to be about characters who come from similar backgrounds or have similar identities to us will represent us and i think that that is so unfair to you the reader but also to the author yes there is an oversaturation of muslim YA novels that do not talk about religiosity that do not talk about you know islam the faith itself and that only want to talk about socio-political issues right but tahra mafi does not owe us that. She does not owe us a story about a perfectly religious Muslim girl who is exploring Islam and talking about what the faith means to her and why she wears hijab. She doesn't owe us that. If she wants to write that ki this kind of story, she has every prerogative to do so. It's her right to write a story like this. It doesn't actually represent a flaw within the story. It's just a, a, a sort of dissonance between your expectation as a reader and what the book actually has to offer. And that's not the book's fault, I think. And I, I don't think that authors, especially authors of like marginalized backgrounds or whatever, or authors who are just underrepresented in literature, I don't think that we should be putting this unfair burden on them to constantly think about representing us. Th this might be a little bit of an under unpopular opinion, but I think that representation is consequential. It should be an added bonus of reading. And when a writer is auth writing a book, like if I were to write a book, I am not going to write it, write it with representing a certain group in mind. I'm going to write the story that comes to me most organically. And if it so happens to represent somebody by consequence, that's great. I would love that. 
but I'm not writing the book because I want to pander to you. I don't want to pander to anybody. I don't want to sit down and have to be burdened with the expectation of representing somebody or representing some group. We are collectives and we are communities and we are groups, but we're also individuals. And I think we need to respect an author's prerogative to not incorporate certain aspects of a lived experience into their story, right? Because maybe they're just different from you. Surprise, surprise, not all Muslims think the same. <laughs> you know, not all Muslims Muslims are interested in exploring Islamic identity in the same way and you shouldn't really like be mad at the author you know in my opinion or the book itself for not representing Islam in the way that you wanted to see it represented I think really we should be you know taking our beef to the publishing industry they really want to write you know every the minute that they see a Muslim book they want a certain thing out of it I genuinely believe that publishing especially young adult publishing is enjoying riding this very lucrative train of you know woke YA political books just because somebody is a Muslim or a person of color or LGBT does not mean that you should reduce their experience to some kind of social justice message we are more than just our politics and I think that's really what one of the major issues is with some of these books the fact that publishing seems to really just kind of want to reduce the Muslim experience to some sort of political message right as opposed to what it is which is so much more complex than just that right i've heard stories about muslim authors submitting drafts and hearing back from editors and agents and whatever that they need to dial down on the religiosity it's unfair that we expect muslim authors to have to write stories about discrimination and and uh, islamophobia and have to censor themselves when it comes to things like you know religiosity and faith and what islam means to the main character and whatnot that really sucks but i also think that we as readers need to understand that do not burden muslim authors with the expectation that their story needs to be some sort of perfect exploration of islam that's not to say that you can't like the book i think it's totally valid for muslims to read this book and not like it because it didn't you know live up to their expectations it's just that that is a subjective thing and that does not necessarily mean that this is a bad book because i actually really liked it and i think a lot of people liked it too so that's everything i had to say about an emotion of great delight and the kind of discussion that i've seen surrounding it i would love to know what your thoughts were on this book if you've read it especially if you are a muslim reviewer and even if you haven't read it i'd still love to know your thoughts on the general discussion that i kind of talked about but that is going to be it for the end of this video thank you all ever so much for watching this video i hope you have a lovely lovely day and until next time inshallah keep reading